When you look at the night sky, you can see thousands of stars using nothing but your eyes, far from the lights of cities. In fact, there are many more stars in the sky that are too faint for us to see. Every single star that you can see is a part of our Milky Way galaxy, our heavenly home that has captured people's attention for ages. The shimmering band of stars, dust, gas, and dark matter that makes up the night sky captures our attention. These elements are all held together by gravity. As we navigate through the cosmos, an intriguing enigma emerges. What is the Milky Way truly like? What makes it up, and where does our solar system exist in the Milky Way? Astronomers have been baffled by these fundamental questions for many centuries, and finding answers was no easy task. But beyond its luminous beauty lies a tapestry of mysteries waiting to be unraveled. Join us today as we embark on an amazing adventure around the Milky Way, uncovering its mysteries, wonders, and majesty. You're probably somewhat familiar with our solar system. If nothing else, you probably already know that it contains eight planets in addition to the Earth, the Sun, moons, and several other celestial bodies like asteroids and Pluto. However, there is a lot more beyond the solar system of which you may not be aware. From Earth, we can see roughly 6,000 stars without the use of a telescope. Even while that seems like a large number of stars, it represents a very small portion of the total. In fact, for every star you can see, there are more than 20 million you cannot see. The majority of stars are either too dim, too far, or obstructed by clouds of cosmic dust. While the Milky Way galaxy contains all of these stars, there are other larger galaxies as well, including the Andromeda Galaxy. Every galaxy is a system made up of various stellar remnants, interstellar medium, and star systems. Astronomers believe there are 100 billion galaxies in the cosmos, yet they are not sure. Intergalactic space, which contains a thin gas, lies in between the galaxies. Given the size of our solar system and the fact that it is only one of many in our galaxy, it is understandable why the universe is thought to be infinite. This truly helps to put into perspective how tiny both Earth and humans are in the big picture. Through the use of radio and X-ray telescopes, scientists have been able to gather information during the past century about the composition of the interstellar medium. They have shown that it is made up of extremely diffuse ionized hydrogen atoms, dust, and cosmic rays scattered throughout thick gas clouds that are thought to be the birthplace of new stars. But because of the Sun, all eight planets, and a far-off disk of debris known as the Kuiper Belt, its precise nature just outside our solar system has remained mostly unknown. The Kuiper Belt is located between 30 and 50 astronomical units from the Sun. One astronomical unit is equivalent to the distance between Earth and the Sun. The heliosphere, a massive protective bubble created by the solar wind, surrounds them all. This bubble buffets against the interstellar medium like an invisible shield, keeping out most dangerous cosmic rays and other material. As the Sun and its surrounding planets hurtle across the galaxy, without the heliosphere, life would certainly have evolved differently and maybe not at all. The area where the Sun's magnetic bubble ends and weakens is known as the interstellar space border. The heliosphere, a magnetic bubble, is full of plasma or ionized gas. The solar wind, which pulls magnetic field lines away from the Sun, blows material into the heliosphere with its own magnetic fields and charged particles. The plasma in the interstellar medium exerts an inward push on the heliosphere edge, creating a complex and dynamic structure there. When the solar wind encounters interstellar space, it begins to weaken and slows to approximately 62 miles per hour. It was previously traveling between 370 and 430 miles per hour. The termination shock is the point at which this happens. 
The heliosheath is the area in the heliosphere where the solar wind continues to slow down after the termination shock, while the heliopause is the outermost point of the heliosphere. The solar wind stops and gives way to interstellar space at the heliopause, which is located around 11 billion miles or 18 billion kilometers from the sun. We have ignition, we have a liftoff. Since the beginning of human space exploration, only two probes have made it to interstellar space, or the area outside of the solar system. After launch in 1977, Voyager 1, the first spacecraft, took more than 30 years to reach the heliopause, a limit that scientists believe marks the beginning of interstellar space. It was an amazing accomplishment, sending back vital information via a medium unaffected by the sun. As we exit the solar system, we will reach Alpha Centauri, the triple star system that is the closest star system to Earth, located about 4.37 light-years away in the constellation Centaurus. It is a triple star system consisting of three stars, Alpha Centauri A, Alpha Centauri B, and Proxima Centauri. Alpha Centauri AB is a binary star system made up of Alpha Centauri A and B, which are sun-like stars classified as class plus G and K respectively. These two main stars have an apparent magnitude of minus 0.27, making them appear to be a single star to the unaided eye. Only Sirius and Canopus are brighter than it, making it the brightest star in the constellation and the third brightest in the night sky. Alpha Centauri B is smaller and colder than Alpha Centauri A, with 0.9 solar mass and less than 0.5 solar luminosity, while Alpha Centauri A has 1.5 times the luminosity and 1.1 times the mass of the Sun. The two have a 79-year orbital period around a shared center. The distance between A and B fluctuates from 35.6 astronomical units, or roughly the distance between Pluto and the Sun, to 11 Australian dollars and 20 cents, or roughly the distance between Saturn and the Sun, due to the eccentricity of their elliptical orbit. In the Alpha Centauri system, Proxima Centauri is the star nearest to the Sun, located approximately 4.2 light-years from Earth. Robert Innes, a Scottish astronomer, made the discovery of the star in 1915. Proxima Centauri is a red dwarf star, which is the most common kind of star. It is roughly seven times smaller than the Sun and a little more than half as hot at 3,100 Kelvin. On the other hand, our Sun is 5,772 Kelvin. As a matter of fact, this little star is just 50% larger than Jupiter. Red dwarf stars have long lives because they consume hydrogen fuel very efficiently. Proxima Centauri is expected to remain in its current state for more than 4 trillion years. Although the Alpha Centauri system can be seen in the constellation Centaurus, Proxima Centauri is usually not visible to the human eye. Proxima Centauri orbits the other two stars in the system, Alpha Centauri A and B. Proxima Centauri takes 550,000 years to complete an orbit of A and B. With an apparent visual magnitude of 11, Proxima Centauri is the dimmest of the three stars. This star emits light at a slower rate than the Sun, with a luminosity of 0.17% that of the Sun. However, Proxima Centauri is categorized as a flare star, which is prone to massive solar flares. Because its brightness can vary by more than one magnitude in a matter of minutes, these flares, which occur multiple times a day, have the potential to be powerful enough to make Proxima Centauri visible to the human eye. The greatest solar flare ever observed in the Milky Way galaxy was released by Proxima Centauri in 2019, glowing 14,000 times brighter in ultraviolet wavelengths than normal. Even though Proxima Centauri will live longer than the Sun, it will eventually meet the same fate. Proxima Centauri will end up as a burning white dwarf star, because it does not have the mass to turn into a neutron star or a black hole when its hydrogen supply runs out. As of 2022, astronomers have detected three planets orbiting Proxima Centauri. 
Proxima b, c, and d. These are the closest planets outside the solar system. Red dwarf stars are small and cool, thus planets can circle quite close to them and still be classified as being in the habitable zone. This is the range of distance from a star where a planet's water, if any, could be liquid and potentially support life. Proxima Centauri b was discovered in 2016 and estimated to contain about 177% more mass than Earth and thus likely to be a rocky planet as well. Proxima Centauri b is still within Proxima Centauri's habitable zone despite being far closer to its star than Earth is to the Sun. It orbits Proxima Centauri every 11 Earth days at a distance of about 0.049 Australian dollars over 20 times closer to Proxima Centauri than Earth is to the Sun. Proxima Centauri b is most likely tidally locked, like our Moon, with one side always facing Earth. Given that it is far closer to its star than Earth, it is therefore possible that liquid water exists on the opposite side, but its habitability is unknown due to the extreme radiation and flares from its host star. Proxima Centauri b feels the gravitational pull of its star much more strongly than we feel the tidal effect of our Sun here on Earth. The Moon exerts more tidal force than the Sun also because it's so much closer, and tides don't just pull on the ocean, they can also move air. It's possible that the tidal pull on the atmosphere of Proxima Centauri b is up to 500 times stronger than that of Earth's atmosphere. It's likely that Proxima Centauri b is getting close to the maximum tidal force that a planet can withstand and still retain a solid surface. However, Proxima Centauri b's climate and weather are mostly unaffected by its extremely high tides. Situated just outside of the habitable zone, at around 1.5 astronomical units from the Red Dwarf, is the mini-Neptune exoplanet Proxima Centauri c which is around seven times the size of Earth and orbits its star once every 1,900 Earth days. First thought to have been discovered in 2019, the super-Earth planet appears to shine much brighter than expected for that size, indicating that it may be shrouded in dust clouds or circled by a ring system. The projected planet's estimated temperature by astronomers is extremely cold, probably close to minus 233 degrees Celsius. This makes it uninhabitable due to its distance from its star and large mass. The gravitational pull of Proxima Centauri c caused its parent star's velocity to wobble, which led to the star's initial detection in 2019. In 2020, pictures from the Hubble Space Telescope from 1995 were used to confirm Proxima Centauri c's existence. It is therefore one of the rare exoplanets with visual confirmation. A third planet was discovered in 2022 around Proxima Centauri. The exoplanet, known as Proxima Centauri d, orbits its star at a distance of roughly 3% of Earth's distance from the Sun and contains about 25% of Earth's mass. Every five Earth days, Proxima Centauri d completes one orbit around its star. Due to its relative proximity to it, it is among the lightest exoplanets that scientists have yet observed. Furthermore, in 2021, scientists detected what may be the first indications of an exoplanet circling Alpha Centauri A, also known as Rigel Centaurus, in the star's habitable zone. Called Candidate C1, it is estimated that C1 has a mass between half of Saturn and Neptune and orbits Alpha Centauri A at a distance of roughly 1.1 Australian dollars. Using direct thermal imaging, C1 was found with an elongation of around 0.1 arc. It looks to be as bright as a giant planet. This is consistent with the orbital motion of a planet in a 70 degrees orbit. The fact that C1 is situated in the habitable zone of Alpha Centauri A and maybe a mini-Neptune or super-Earth makes the discovery of this exoplanet much more interesting. We are almost certain that planets similar to Earth exist in Alpha Centauri, but the main question is, could humans ever actually live there? The most challenging obstacle in our quest to set up a new home in the Alpha Centauri system 
would undoubtedly be traveling a huge distance to reach these three stars. Even though Alpha Centauri is the nearest star system to Earth, it is still more than four light years away. That comes to roughly 23.5 trillion miles or 37.8 trillion kilometers. We would need a far faster spacecraft or another means of transportation to cover such a great distance. NASA claims that the Space Shuttle Discovery, which was discontinued in 2011, had a top speed of about 17,500 miles per hour. Still, reaching Alpha Centauri would take more than 148,000 years, even at this steady speed. NASA estimates that even when the Orion spacecraft, the crew capsule linked to the Artemis program, is prepared to carry people, its maximum velocity will be approximately 20,000 miles per hour. This won't significantly cut down the travel time to Proxima Centauri. That's even if either of these vehicles was designed to journey out of the solar system, rather than just making relatively short trips to the Moon or Mars. As we have already discussed, the only spacecraft to make it out of the solar system thus far are Voyager 1 and 2. Even at their top speed of over 35,000 miles per hour, it will take them nearly 40,000 years to travel two light years to reach the indistinct boundary between Proxima Centauri and our solar system. That implies that it might take these spacecraft more than 880,000 years to reach close to the star. After all, it takes light more than four years to reach Alpha Centauri. A spacecraft needs to be extremely tiny and robotic in order to reach a distant star in a reasonable amount of time like within a generation. Furthermore, it still needs an incredibly strong energy boost to get up to speed. And that is the basic concept behind the Breakthrough Starshot project. By creating a light sail-equipped nanocraft called Starship that would be sent into Earth orbit, the mothership would release the tiny probes one at a time, which would then ride the beams of a colossal ground-based laser array. The main challenge, though, is the Earth's atmosphere, which distorts laser and incoming light and makes it challenging to apply the force required to move a spacecraft forward. Much more potent lasers on the ground would be able to keep a close focus on the space mission thanks to small lasers mounted on satellites that would evaluate atmospheric impacts in real time. To send out the vessel at any given time, the required lasers need an astounding 100 gigawatts of power which is equal to the total U.S. electricity usage. But the lasers only need to operate for 10 minutes at full power. They plan to employ 100 million lasers to distribute the electricity across an area of one square kilometer. The Starshot team is determined to push the boundaries of space exploration. When the lasers are switched off, the object racing through space will be traveling at a stunning 20% of the speed of light more than 130 million miles per hour or 216 million kilometers per hour. With a diameter of little over 10 m, this spacecraft could reach Alpha Centauri in about 22 years, but it might be significantly slowed down by the Sun's gravitational pull and interstellar debris. It will take four more years for the spacecraft's signals to reach Earth, even if they make it to Alpha Centauri. Alpha Centauri is moving toward Earth, but very slowly and doesn't pose an immediate cause for concern. The distance between Alpha Centauri and Earth, as of 2024, is approximately 3.26 light years. It will be at its closest in 29,700 AD, when it will be approximately 3 light years away. Over the course of a human lifetime, the slow change in distance will have no noticeable impact on Earth or the solar system. Space is a remarkable place. We're learning new things about it every day. Leaving Alpha Centauri behind, we travel on to Barnard's star, the second nearest star to the Sun, at a distance of 5.95 light years. It has the name Edward Emerson Barnard in honor of the American astronomer who made the discovery in 1916. With an estimated age of 11 to 12 billion years, or roughly twice that of the Sun, Barnard's star is an old star and most likely a thick disk member of the Milky Way. 
Red dwarfs that are young or middle-aged often spin fast enough to produce powerful magnetic fields, which can result in flares that quickly double a star's brightness. But Barnard's star was too old to show this kind of behavior. However, on July 17, 1998, Diane Pesson and her colleagues at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center revealed that a flare similar to this one had been released by Barnard's star. At the time, the star's spectra was being obtained using the 2.7M telescope at McDonald Observatory by William Cochran of the University of Texas at Austin. His hope had been to find alterations that would point to the existence of planets in orbit. Rather, he saw emission lines in the spectrum which showed that the star might be flaring. For years later, Cochrane's team's investigation revealed that the star's hot blue flare was similar to those from younger red dwarfs. Even though it was quite old, the temperature of the flare was at least 8,000 Kelvin, which was more than twice as hot as the 3,100 Kelvin temperature of the star. As Barnard's star gets closer to us, its distance from us is decreasing by 0.036 light-years every century, at an incredibly fast speed of 108 kilometers per second or 67 miles per second. Its closest approach to the Sun will be at a distance of just 3.85 light-years by 11,800 AD. In terms of its proper motion, Barnard's star is also the fastest-moving star in Earth's skies. Another feature that makes Barnard's star unique is the largest proper motion of any star, which is approximately 10.4 arcseconds per year or the equivalent of a lunar diameter every 180 years. Because of this and its relative closeness, it is an ideal target for exoplanet searches since any systematic variations in its motion across the sky brought on by planets in orbit would be more noticeable. Finally, a planet was found around Barnard's star in 2018. The planet orbits the star at a distance of roughly 60 million kilometers or 37 million miles on a 233-day orbit with a mass at least 3.2 times that of Earth. The planet is not in the habitable zone due to the star's low brightness and any water on its surface would probably be frozen. As we go farther away, around 8.6 light-years away near the constellation of Orion, we will find Sirius, also known as the Dog Star or Sirius A, which is the brightest star in Earth's night sky. With a mass twice that of the Sun, Sirius has a diameter of 1.5 million miles or 2.4 million kilometers. The star Sirius would outshine our Sun by a factor of more than 20 if it were positioned next to it. Within the Canis Major constellation, Sirius is a binary star. The star's name comes from the Greek word Asiros, e which means glowing or scorching. With a surface temperature of almost 18,000 degrees Fahrenheit, Sirius has a bluish tint and is 25 times brighter than the Sun. It is clearly visible in the winter night sky of the Northern Hemisphere. The ancients were familiar with Sirius due to its extreme brightness. Nevertheless, astronomers were taken aback when Sirius B, a companion star, was discovered in 1862. The star is visible to the naked eye. On the other hand, Sirius B is 10,000 times fainter than Sirius. Thanks to data from the Hubble Space Telescope, Astronomers were finally able to estimate the mass of this faint object in 2005, despite the fact that it is extremely difficult to observe from Earth. Within 20 light years of the Sun are around 131 objects, including stars, brown dwarfs, and subbrown dwarfs. Only 22 stars are bright enough to be seen without a telescope, meaning their visible light must be at least 6.5 apparent magnitude the lowest brightness that can be seen with the naked eye from Earth. The known 131 objects abound in 99 stellar systems. Out of these, 103 are main sequence stars, consisting of 23 typical stars with a higher mass and 80 red dwarfs. In addition, scientists have discovered 21 brown dwarfs, one subbrown dwarf, Y0855-0714, which is possibly a rogue planet, 
and six white dwarfs. White dwarfs are stars that have used up all of their fusible hydrogen. A red dwarf candidate known as Schultz's star and a companion brown dwarf passed near the edge of the Oort cloud around 70,000 years ago. At this moment, it is approximately 22 light years away from the sun and has likely triggered a comet storm that will take over a million years to reach the inner solar system. The Kuiper Belt object's orbits were impacted by its passage. Some other stars, such as the G-type star HD 7977, have also been researched. It had its close pass around 2.8 million years ago, and is currently located about 247 light-years from Earth. Of course, past interactions aren't the only thing to consider. There will be more stars in the future.